It's often said, if you have your ear to the ground, you'll hear everything that people are saying and doing. But as you'll hear in our next piece, if you do that on Mars, you'll be confounded with a cacophony of sounds and mystified by their origins. Some people say that the origin of this next sound, recorded by NASA, was from a Martian civilization. We say it's something you've got to hear to believe. March 6, 2019, around 2 p.m. local Mars time, the 98th Martian day or soul of the mission for NASA's InSight lander. The spacecraft is surveying its workspace. A camera on its robotic arm is moving and snapping pictures after placing a seismometer on the surface to study Mars quakes. While it finds many, it also detects this. First, an eerie hollow noise, followed by a series of dinks and donks. Then a howl right out of a science fiction film. What could be making these strange sounds? George Haas is the director of the Cydonia Institute, which argues that ancient civilizations existed on Mars. NASA's research with Mars found overwhelming evidence that Mars was a wet, green planet, very similar to Earth, had water, uh, breathable air. Uh, many people think there was a civilization that once lived there and is now extinct. So perhaps we're hearing some type of signals being sent out from Mars from the distant past. Back in 1901, Nikola Tesla claims that he had received radio signals from Mars. So possibly this is the remnant of that communication that we're hearing now. Another possibility, and go with us for a minute, is that the sounds are emanating from within some large underground structure. Some researchers believe that sound played a major role in the architecture and the building of the pyramids. A passage was discovered inside the Great Pyramid of Giza, thought by some to function as an acoustic resonance tube, meaning it amplified sound vibrations from the air outside, generating infrasounds that some claim can induce otherworldly sensations. Could this have been a deliberate part of the pyramid's design? And could an alien race have constructed something similar on Mars? There's uh, no reason to think there couldn't have been an advanced culture on the planet that could produce structures that were similar. And what we're hearing with these odd sounds on Mars is the remnants of some structure that's been buried beneath the surface. The nature of Mars's atmosphere means sound operates differently there. In fact, sound travels 100 meters per second slower on that planet than on Earth. Additionally, there are two speeds of sound on Mars, one for high-pitched sounds and one for low-pitched sounds. Let's see if our experts can pitch in and tell us what we're hearing here. First, audio forensic analyst Ed Primo helps us determine if this sound could be a fake, and he comes to a quick conclusion. I found the recording in question on the NASA website, so I believe this is a genuine recording. He proceeds to compare the sound to the first potential match, Mars quakes, which are frequent and well documented. The frequency range on the quake is below 100 hertz uh, across the board. The recording in question goes up much higher than that, about 400 to 1,000 hertz. So I can safely rule out this sound being a quake. Next, physicist Matthew Shadagas digs into the extinct civilization signal theory. Some people have hypothesized that this is some sort of alien we are hearing. However, Mars has not been what we would consider habitable for billions of years. The Martian atmosphere is extremely thin, and it doesn't have significant quantities of atoms or molecules necessary for life, for example, oxygen. Even if we consider life forms that don't require oxygen, such as anaerobic bacteria, an advanced intelligent civilization existing on Mars is very unlikely. Shadagas says this also reduces the possibility of the sounds emanating from an ancient structure. It would just be too old to survive till now. It is possible there are structures buried under the surface of Mars, especially as it's a desert, but this just seems very far-fetched to me, and I think this is something else. 
so what are we hearing on Mars' surface here? NASA geologist Dr. Bob Anderson, who actually works on the Mars missions, has a theory. He thinks the sound was made by NASA's InSight lander itself. Because of the high technology of the seismometer, that's what we're actually picking up here. The vibration of the arm moving, wind blowing, the sand around, the vibration of those particles pushing across the, the soil. That's what you're hearing in this recording. Our verdict, wind, and the movement of the spacecraft itself. While this NASA mission has provided great data for scientists and even greater fodder for ufologists, it is expected to cease functioning by the end of the year. But not us. We'll keep an eye and an ear and a seismometer out for any more Martian discoveries. It's getting dark on the evening of October 8th, 2020. Keith Lindsay is out in the wilderness of Fairbanks, Alaska, metal detecting. The sun is beginning to set when he hears something that stops him in his tracks. Whoa, did you hear that? He begins to pack up when the growl grows closer. The first few sounds I heard kind of sounded like a howl. That's why I thought they were wolves. But then they started shortening up to like grunts or whoops. Oh, jeez. A final scream encroaches too close for comfort before an object is thrown into the waters beside him. And Keith gets out of there fast. Let's hear it one more time. Oh, jeez. That was that loud and that close. I didn't want to hear it louder or closer. Field researcher Cliff Barrickman points out that Fairbanks does lie in the middle of an area in Alaska known for unusual activity, including strange lights in the sky, alleged alien abductions, and even Bigfoot sightings. Everyone's heard of the Bermuda Triangle. Well, it turns out that there's another triangular area up in Alaska where all sorts of stuff happens that's really weird. The Alaskan Triangle is a geographic area enclosed by three points, Juneau, Anchorage, and a town called Ukiavuk. Over the last four decades, literally thousands of people have gone missing in the wilds of Alaska. Hundreds of search parties have been organized, and very few of these people have ever surfaced. And while we usually think of Bigfoot as a more reserved creature, Barrickman says they can be aggressive. Sasquatches are not herbivores like all the other ape species. Sasquatches have been observed hunting and killing and eating animals, everything from deer and elk to rodents, you name it. And if a Sasquatch is pressed into a starvation situation, human beings probably look delicious at times. Oh, jeez. According to the indigenous people from the Olympic Peninsula in Washington, a Bigfoot once stole a child from a canoe. As the story goes, by the time Bigfoot was tracked down, he had already partially eaten the little girl and was killed for his misdeeds. So there's really no shortage of murderous Bigfoot tales from this area. Let's see what our experts think. First, wildlife biologist Stephanie Shuttler answers a basic question. Could Bigfoot even survive in Alaska? Of the existing primate species, none of them live in cold environments except for the Japanese macaque. All of the other ones are in more tropical areas. So it's very unlikely that a primate could survive in this type of environment. Also, there are scientists who do a lot of research there. There would be dung evidence, some indication on camera traps. Those scientists have not found any of that. But what about those whooping noises that are attributed to Bigfoot? Animals make some weird noises. Lynx and bobcats make some crazy, scary noises as well. So that can't be ruled out. Oh, jeez. OK, but Keith recorded something. So forensic audio analyst Ed Primo, yes, he's Michael's dad, takes a crack at deciphering what we're hearing. I hear a sound that is indicative of what an animal would sound like, howling. So I pulled some examples of other animals that are in the Alaskan wilderness. First, the Kodiak bear, one of the largest carnivores in the world. So when I look at the wave formation of the bear, 
the frequency range is 500 hertz and below. The frequency range of the unknown sound is a little bit higher, around 800 to 1000 kilohertz. I can safely rule out this sound coming from a bear. Next, the fearsome wolverine, also known as the devil bear in Alaska. The wolverine is a much higher frequency range, more like 800 to 3000. The unknown sound is not a wolverine. And finally, a wolf. Remember, that's what Ken says he originally suspected. Alaska is home to an estimated 7,000 to 11,000 of them. This one does represent what I'm hearing with the unknown sound. I've been practicing for 38 years, and this particular recording sounds like an animal. It could possibly be a wolf howl. It appears to be authentic and intact on the original recording and not an overlay or an overdub of the sound. Oh, jeez. Our verdict, we're calling this one a possible wolf. Our experts think the howls we hear sound canid in origin, but that doesn't explain that object Keith says was thrown into the water. What wolf or coyote can throw rocks? We can't say for sure what was out there in the woods, but with a population density of a single person per square mile, Alaska is still the final frontier. So we'll continue to hunt for evidence. It's March 1st, 1999, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, is continuing its deep sea research along the frozen waters of Antarctica as they record audio of the water using an autonomous hydrophone array, an unexpected sound emerges. We hear a strange, otherworldly moaning sound emanating from the bowels of the deep. If some sea beast is making this noise, it has to be huge. The sound is loud enough to be heard over a range of 3,000 miles, but where it's coming from exactly, no one knows. <sighs> Journalist Aaron McCarthy says experts were confounded by this underwater roar. It's believed to have originated between the Bransfield Straits and Cape Adair in Antarctica. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration nicknamed this seriously loud noise the Julia sound. The Antarctic is home to plenty of wildlife. So one theory is that maybe a known creature created this loud sound. In fact, the Antarctic waters are home to the largest and loudest documented animal in the world, the Atlantic blue whale. Weighing more than half a million pounds, the blue whale calls can be heard for hundreds of miles and can reach decibels louder than a jet engine. But according to Aaron McCarthy, theories began to emerge that the sound was made by something more monstrous. Some have wondered if the Julia noise is actually a sea monster, possibly the Kraken. The Kraken, one of the most legendary monsters of the deep, was a giant multi-tentacled squid-like creature that dominated the nightmares of sea folk since the 12th century. And while many consider the Kraken to be nothing more than a myth, recent discoveries of ichthyosaur dinosaur bones, some found right here in Antarctica, suggest something killed these 30-foot marine beasts by crushing their chests and twisting their necks by using large tentacles. Could this be a Kraken? Cape Adair is the site of the first documented landing on Antarctica. Norwegian explorers arrived there in 1895 and later built two huts there, the first known human structures erected on the continent. More than a hundred years later, what could be causing the mysterious sounds emanating from the depths of the continent's remote waters? Marine biologist Shea Steingas vetoes the Kraken theory. The Kraken, which is an incredibly large squid-like sea monster, wouldn't even have the right organs or anatomy to make these sounds. 
Squids are just cephalopods. Cephalopods don't even really have vocal cords and lungs because they're actually just ocean-dwelling invertebrates. While all marine mammals can communicate with sound, as can certain fish and even loud clicking crustaceans, cephalopods remain stealthily silent. So there's nothing on a kraken or squid or octopus that can even make this kind of a sound. In any case, we checked with forensic sound expert Rob Maher, who first tests the Julia sound against the blue whale. Comparing the frequency range of the, the blue whale to the uh, Julia sound, the blue whale is at a lower frequency than the Julia sound. The characteristics of a biological uh, sound underwater don't match what we would see in the Julia sound. Maher also rules out mechanical sounds like deep sea drills, since those tend to be regular and rhythmic. This thing sure isn't. So what does that leave us? Maher thinks there's only one remaining possibility that makes sense. It's likely from geological sources. We also have ice and glaciers that are entering the ocean, and the motion of, of the ice rubbing against other ice or against the ground or the ocean surface will create sound. Icebergs make sounds? Turns out we only discovered that in the past 25 years. In fact, these sounds are some of the loudest in the ocean, the equivalent of 200 super tankers on par with undersea volcanoes and earthquakes, and can be picked up thousands of kilometers away. If we compare the sound shown here of an actual iceberg event, the characteristics of this tone are similar to what we see in the Julia sound. Our verdict, icebergs. Such a massive sound like Julia requires a massive force behind it. And in Antarctica, nothing comes bigger. As for our Kraken, he will just have to stay dormant for now. It's July 2020, outside Butte, Montana. Photographer Nicholas Warner has traveled to Dry Mountain to witness one of the strangest natural wonders in Big Sky Country. His drone footage shows a massive pile of rust-colored boulders that seem oddly out of place in contrast with the drab gray of the rocks lying nearby. And when struck lightly with a hammer, Each boulder produces a bell-like tone. Some rocks, depending on where you hit them, they come up with a different sound. I'm still kind of baffled by how it was able to make such a loud, distinct ringing sound. For whatever reason, this specific pile of rocks has some sort of strange quality to it. What's especially strange is that when rocks have been removed from this site, they no longer ring. Nicholas says the whole area has a kind of creepy feeling to it. It was that feeling door, someone is watching you. It felt very uncanny. I would say that there's definitely some sort of mystical quality to the area. The Bell Rocks of Montana aren't the only ancient stones to produce this unique brand of rock music. Many civilizations believe these areas where rocks ring like they are hollow were special places of great mystical and spiritual significance. Ringing rocks and gongs of various types and with differing sounds are found around the world at sites in the US, Mexico, Europe, Africa, India, and Australia. But where did these massive, seemingly out-of-place stones come from? Author Jason Martell says some think sound helped build the Egyptian pyramids and maybe move these rocks as well. Around the world, there's theories that using vibrational sound can actually levitate large stones. I think that perhaps they were moved here using some type of a sound frequency. Experiments have proven it's possible to levitate objects by using high-frequency sound waves to create a standing wave that acts as a force to counteract gravity. But can it work for something as big as boulders? There may be several sites around the world known for their ringing rocks, but there has been less investigation into the special property of these stones than you would expect. 
especially considering that humans have used them as musical and ritualistic instruments since before written history. So what's going on here? Our experts leave no stone unturned. We take the footage to our forensic audio analyst, Dr. Rob Maher, and deduce if the rocks were put here intentionally. First, he compares them to church bells. The ringing rock have this characteristic here, which is loud, and then it dies out as the ring goes away. And for the church bells here, we can see the same characteristic of the sound. We can see the start of that and then the decay. So the two sounds are distinctive. Our ear can tell the difference, but they share many of the same kind of characteristics. So maybe these rocks were placed here on purpose to designate a spot as sacred as a church? But while the bell rocks share similar properties with a church bell, Maher says they don't show signs of being intentionally arranged. The orchestral chimes will ring for a much longer period of time. They're designed very specifically to give that sustained sort of quality so that they will have a longer uh, duration of vibration and give us a different sound quality than the random collection of minerals in that rock. So if nobody put these ringing rocks here, where'd they come from? And why do they ring? NASA geologist Dr. Bob Anderson weighs in. It looks like a pile of rocks that somebody might have dropped off. It's not. What it is, it's an old, what we call a plug or a batholith from a volcano that has been exposed and is breaking apart into all these pieces because of weathering. A batholith is a large mass of intrusive igneous rock which forms from magma that's cooled after rising into the Earth's crust. Perhaps the most famous batholith is Half Dome in Yosemite National Park. Anderson says the secret behind the ringing is most likely a combination of the mineral composition of the rocks and the way joining patterns have developed as the rocks have eroded. That's why they only ring here. The resonance depends on how they are connected. Most of these rocks are basalts, and basalts are igneous rocks that come up from the underground. What happens over the years, the rocks are breaking apart. Each of those rocks, as long as they're in connection, has that resonance standing wave that'll ring as a unit. But when you start seeing all these little pieces, now you're making up the orchestra. And so all the little pieces have a different pitch and different tone as they break apart and weather away. Our verdict, this is a natural geological phenomenon. But we still can't explain why people feel a mystical presence around the ringing rocks. If you make the trip out there, maybe you'll feel it too. Just make sure you leave the rocks as you find them.